Well, um, when we take a, a diet, so some, most of the nutrients hopefully will be taken by human body. We, we, take, we digest and absorb mo most of the nutrients. But uh, those undigestible or non, uh, not yet digested nutrients will be used by the gut bacteria. So different gut bacteria, they have different uh, nutritional requirements. So different diets will encourage the growth of different bacteria. So when you change the diet, and you will change uh, which one can thrive and which will decline. So that's why we change the diet, we can change the microbiota. Some populations seem to be very stable. Many uh, kinds of bacteria in our gut, they are still changeable by changing our, our diet. But if you want the change to be lasting, you need to keep the new diet. That, that's the key. Well, I think it has a great potential. Uh, like uh, uh, through the Professor Jeff Gordon's study and uh, our study and many other uh, labs uh, work, we can see that uh, the, some components of the gut microbiota, they can directly regulate uh, lipid metabolism genes. Uh, basically, they can, some bad bacteria can inhibit genes required for burning stored fat and promoting the genes for synthesizing fat. So if you would like to uh, reduce obesity, to burn stored fat, you need to, you need to change the microbiota to, so that our genes can be uh, induced by hunger, and then we can start to burn stored fat. So you need to change the microbiota in order to efficiently reduce uh, the, the fat. Well, I think it's very uh, important uh, for preparing the fecal transplant. Uh, one is the safety issue. So you need to make sure there's not uh, any potentially pathogenic uh, bacteria or virus. And the other one is actually you need to make sure that the microbiota is as healthy as possible. So in that sense, I would recommend uh, a diet specifically designed for the donor and uh, taking that for a certain period of time and make sure that analyze the microbiota, both the structure and the function, make sure that it's safe and also it's healthy before we give that to the recipient. By looking at the composition, particularly the, 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 the genes, uh, if you have metagenomic data, and, and the species composition or the functional gene composition, you can have a general idea whether this is a good microbiota, whether it's potentially reducing obesity or not. It's possible, but uh, to make it for sure, maybe you need to test that in germ-free mice and before you, you go further. <laughs> that probably should become a common practice.